Hey, I'm Red. You're watching Power Garage. Back on the eBay EM2. Today, this thing is like a 4x4. So, we're going to slap some coilovers that I picked up. Get this thing ready nice. So, check it out. Okay, so, um, putting on coilovers is pretty straightforward. I mean, it's, it's basically just you swap one for the other. Then you just have to adjust them. So, um... I mean, you just have to take everything off. It's, it's not that challenging. One thing I do like to do before I start is, uh, if you're able to, I like to pop the, um, the axle nut. Because what happens is the, the spindle, the brake assembly, is heavy and it'll fall forward as soon as you take out these bolts. So, you just you take this off it won't be pulling on uh, the, the axle and then the inner joint won't pop out because if that happens then it's kind of annoying because you have to uh, pop the axle back in and uh, you could damage it. So start taking stuff off, brake line, the EDS sensor. You don't want to you don't want to yank on this thing because it'll uh, it'll damage it. Take it off and then just put it out of the way. Those are free. Then we have to get right here. Oh, I think it's 22. On the other side, this one's, I think it's a 19. Okay, take those, take those. Okay, those are loose. Now I need to pop the tie right in because this whole thing is coming off. So, give me a second. Okay, just pop the 17. I'm not gonna take it off. I guess it wasn't that tight from last time. Normally what you have to do to pop this off is uh, you use a hammer to shock it and then it'll come right out. Last time I worked on it, uh, I guess I didn't make it too tight. So, now that these are loose, just pop these bolts out right here. There we go. And since the axle's loose, it'll just let you hang. So there we go. Now, that I have those bolts out, I have to go up top. And then, be careful, I'm going to grab the bottom right here so it doesn't fall down and hit me in the foot. There we go. Old, new. Since we're doing a budget build on this car, I found these coilovers for uh, 250 bucks off some guy off Facebook. So. Went over and picked them up. They usually retail for about eight, nine hundred bucks. So I got a pretty good deal for this car. So also too, one thing to remember on the upper hats, it has an L right here and the arrow points towards the outside of the car. So it just helps you line up, uh, line up the top. So it didn't want to go in right away, but uh, we just tightened it. So we go, just throw this thing on there with a nut. Super easy. Right, so. Once you get this nut in here, you just gotta uh, put this little cotter pin so that if for some reason uh, this comes loose, the nut won't fall off and then the car won't just go wherever it wants to go. Okay. So, this has to go up. There we go. Where's that other bolt? Okay. 
And uh, these, they have a notch in the upper so you can camber it. So since we're gonna lower the car, we'll just camber it all the way, all the way out so that we won't get any negative camber. So, on my wrist, there we go. Nice and snug. Well, the axle on here. Uh, some cars don't have this, but if you do, you should reuse it. It's a good thing to have. Some people, they like to remove their ABS for some reason. They think it makes their engine bay look cleaner. Or they say that, oh, the ABS is intrusive on my driving. Well, in my opinion, ABS is great. It only works when you absolutely need it. And if you need it, well then... There's no aggressive driving style that will get you without it. So, okay, this side's done. I have to do the other side and then we'll go to the rear. And then once we get all four sides done, uh, then we can do the adjustment. Okay, so I'm gonna get started doing the front five lug. We have a uh, spindle and rotor from a base RSX that we got from the junkyard. It's pretty haggard, but you know what? All this crap will uh, just dust off. We got the base model because it uses the same axles or the same size axles. It uses the 32 axle nut versus the 36 on the RSX Type S. And since we're going to leave this car with the single cam motor, we'd have to get some custom axles and a bunch of stupid crap. So what we're gonna do is just swap these on. And then later, if we have any problems with our axles, uh, we will upgrade to something a little bit better, but keep the splines the same so that we, uh, we don't have any trouble. So, pretty straightforward. We just have to take all this stuff off of here, this whole spindle, and just swap it over. So, just take me a minute, start getting this thing off. interchangeable it's, it's not not too difficult um, one thing I'm not sure about is the, the ABS sensor I might have to change it. But lucky for me when I went to the junkyard they gave me the ABS sensor so uh, we should be good on that one so we're, gonna, we're gonna find out right now What do you think, Tim? Five lugs pretty nice. Well, we get a better room selection when we do five lugs, so. Yeah, and also too, we figured since uh, since we're going to be um, uh, oops, forgot to uh, forgot to undo the axle nut. The axle does have to come out, and since uh, we were planning on doing the. Um, rear disc conversion. Um, we have the spindles, the knuckles for the rear that we took off of Tim's car to do the all-wheel drive. So I figure we might as well just do everything at once uh, because we already have the used parts. So all I had to do to go to the junkyard was just buy these and we had everything we need. Pretty sure the calipers are the same. So we're gonna try these out. And just put those to the side. Get a 
gonna take the pin of this, the bottom. Give me a second. Okay. We have the pin that goes into the ball joint. Now that I took that off, There we go. Always, always a pain in the butt. Ooh. Okay. W40. It's kind of it's kind of rusty. Sometimes when you get stuff from the junkyard, it's just super rusty. Here, I need you to get the jack that you're standing on. Stuff can be a little difficult. Just gotta be patient. Okay. Yeah, I'm just throwing this in just to be cheap. Honestly, I would recommend um, I would recommend getting these rotors turned and then using some new brake pads. But uh, we keep changing things, so. I don't see the point in spending money on something that I'm just gonna change uh, in a few days or a week. All right, so finally, with a lot of persuasion, a little bit of lube, finally got it, axle fits. And then back here, which you can't really see too well, um, the, so right here, ABS sensor corresponds with the ring right here. And if I look at the gap, it's perfect. So, with these knuckles, it fits, which is a good thing because they actually have a, uh, two different spacing for the base model and the Type S. So, sure enough, it fits. So, I'm happy with that. Okay, so, now, Let's try one more thing. You know, these pads are almost done, but whatever. We're gonna we're gonna change these in a little bit. So I 
And sure enough, we're golden, Tim. What do you think? So stock Civic brakes are working on those base R6 knuckles and discs. Yep. I thought they were the same, but I wasn't 100% until just now. So looks like it fits good. I might, uh, I might get these rotors cut and get the new pads right. because now I know that they actually fit. So, but at the end of the day, I don't really care about these rotors because we actually already bought some Type S, but we just haven't put it on yet. Because uh, Tim had some calipers, but he couldn't find them. So there we go, we're good. So last time we did the coilovers, those run great. This time we did the five look. So now we can just use some OEM 16 inch rims. We got the five look. And uh, we're good. All right, let's do the rear then. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna get going on the rear. I got the five lug right here. I got the coilover right here. Um, the front, we were gonna split it up into, into two videos, but we decided not to because uh, it really didn't take me that long. So I'm just gonna do everything at once, five lug and suspension. So we gotta start on this thing. Get this thing on bolted. Oops, wrong one. In my 17. Get this thing unbolted. Gotta get the alignment. Getting a little, a little snug in there. So sometimes, sometimes things can be a little a little rusty and they don't want to come out. Uh, here, can you give me my pry bar? Yeah, here. Just give a little, little tap with the hammer, it'll, it'll come out eventually. Yeah, it's all rusted up. At least it came out. Okay. Take out this ABS sensor because we don't want to nick it up. Oh, you know what? I need my, my ratchet. I think it's in the trunk. Careful with these, they're kind of sensitive. If you yank on them too much, then it'll, uh, it'll stop working and then you won't have anti lock brakes anymore. See? Right there. Take the top. Okay, no problem. So, I have to disconnect the soft brake line and the e-brake, but I don't want too much of the fluid coming out, so I'm going to try to do it when, when I place this one up there. So, give me a second. So, I have a little trick. You just put the 14 on there, and then I have a five millimeter Allen. There we go. Makes it easy. Then, oh, let's see if I can get this. Oh. Wow. Pain in my butt. Suspension is just. It's just pushing down on this. I think it's because the last person to work on this car, they just they put, it, they put it on there crooked. Oh yeah, see, you can see, it's all crooked. Not hard. Yeah, that was just a 
flashlight that was not necessary. Okay, so now that I got the bottom of the shotgun done, there we go. She was pushing up on it too. Now we gotta go through the trunk. Pop the seat for me, Tim. Yeah. We have a CD player down here too. Nice. Oh no, that's going in the trash. Ah. Let's uh. Okay. Got to pull it. Go. Damn. That was way too tight. This car, there's a little, uh, little access right here. Boom. Get your wrench right through there. Oh, oh and then I almost lost the nut. Tim, need your help here. Yeah. Okay. Here, here's the other net. Oh. Cool. Go out with the old and with the net. Okay. One second. Clean the drain the top on real fast. Once come on. Okay. Thread that one. Drain the other one. Okay, and we got ratchet time. Let's go. see where I need to be. I gotta line up this bolt. There we go. Okay. So line that up. Tighten it. Woo. I think I think I put the wrong one. That one's a little bit too long. I think they're both. There we go. Easy. Now, where's that, where's that other sway bar, Tim? Yeah. Let's bolt this on before we, uh, we get too far. I think we put it in the... See, it's on the side of the car. This one right here? This one red? Okay, and then also too, keep in mind, there's arrows, take it away. There's arrows on these brackets. Oh no, here, it's upside down. It's upside down, it's upside down. Okay. No. There. Oh, that way. <laughs> Put it in the position, put it in the position where it needs to go. Okay. Is it is it clearing everything or no? Yeah. I'm clear. Yeah. Are up. Okay. I need a little bolt. Okay. 
Yeah, we got a sway bar from uh, RSX Type S. Stiffen this thing up a little bit. It's not huge, but it will make a difference. Let me see. It's not even close. Looks like this ABS sensor was cut. Okay. I'm just gonna take this off. Because we still have the nice Civic one. So, oh, no problem. It's kind of heavy. There we go. Just gotta get everything lined up. Oh, get the top one on first. Oops, wrong way. I need the one on the front. Okay, and then I gotta put the alignment eccentric back in. Line it up in the middle. Okay. Nope, that's not the right one. Here it is. Gonna need an alignment after this, obviously. I can usually eyeball it, and then it'll drive okay to get to the alignment shop, but. Okay, keep back, the front. Problem. Throw this ABS sensor in here. Can't really see it too well from the angle that Tim's at. Nah, you still can't see it. No. Okay. I'm just gonna throw this 10 in here. Okay. And there was a... Oh, the 12. That's what I was looking for. For this brake line. So now that this thing is up in here, do you see where my 10 went? Oh, I think it's right behind you. It's on the ground, Tim. Typical. 10 millimeter wrench, please. It's you're staring at oh. me. Thank you. <laughs> I'm blind sometimes, sorry. It's okay. You didn't know what I wanted. Okay. Pop that loose. Get my duckbill pliers. I like these, they work really well. Just have to uh, kind of wiggle this thing out. There we go. Don't want to damage it because we got to reuse this. There we go. A little bit of tension on this. Just gotta. There we go. It's okay if you lose a little bit of fluid. We're gonna. We're gonna bleed this. And then also to remember that the bottom is, is keyed. It only fits in one way. So if it's not sitting flat, you don't have it in there correctly. Okay. Yeah, that thing is flat. Let's put the clip back in. Sometimes it takes a little finessing. Tighten up this brake line. There we go. Okay. And then we're just gonna connect this e-brake cable. We just have to run it underneath and then up into the car. And then we have to take the center console out and connect the cables and bleed the brakes and that's it. Okay, so since we lowered the car, I think it looks pretty good. I kind of like a two-finger gap. Um, got the RSX wheels on, the five lug, 
Everything fits great. The only problem is when you lower the car, the way the suspension is designed, it has two arms that go from the center of the rack. So when you, when you lower it, the arms go like this. So it pulls the suspension in. So it's gonna need an alignment. If you look right here, this side, it looks pretty, pretty level. But then if you look at the other side, horrible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna adjust one side uh, just so that we can at least drive the car to the alignment shop and then not have too many problems. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this, the other side in. Oops, sorry, Tim. <laughs> and then, uh, and then now, come over here. Now I can see the adjuster right here. So all I have to do to adjust the toe on this car, I just have to pop this thing loose and, uh, and just adjust a little bit. Give me a second, Tim. Gotta get it on here. These, sometimes these are like funny sizes. Oh, there we go. Smash my hair a little bit, but it's okay. Okay. So just loosen that up. Ooh. I don't think this has ever been adjusted. You know what? A little bit of a little bit of lube goes a long way. Where's my W40? Here we go. Okay. So which way was it, Tim? That I have to go in or out with it? Out. Okay, let me see. Let me double let me double check. I can't remember. Yeah, this, one's, this one's pointing in. Okay, yeah. So it's it's towed in. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to tighten that uh, that side. Give me a second. There we go. It turns a lot a lot easier with that lube on there. This thing has ever had alignment. Alignment. You know, maybe try. Give me a second. Let me go, Mike. Seventeen. Might be a little bit easier. Oh no, it's probably nineteen. There we go. Three quarters will work. Normally it's pretty easy to turn these, but you know, corrosion happens and uh Okay, that's as far as it'll go. Tighten this up. We'll check it out. If it's good enough, then we're gonna shoot it. Okay. bit better but okay well I'm gonna adjust the other side but because there's no room with the engine I'm just gonna have to get underneath the car so I'm gonna get that done get the car uh, drivable take it for the alignment and next time we'll uh, do more fun stuff to this car so keep watching the videos hit subscribe hit like and I'll see you guys next time